Hello everyone and welcome to Top Team Testing. In this series, I go over a recently successful team and analyze its strengths, weaknesses, and common game plans through the lens of several replays, including a best of three. After one 10 minute video, you should feel comfortable bringing this team to an online tournament, such as the one hosted by Mount Moon or the one hosted by Kiki this weekend. This week, we're featuring a team that dominated the battle spot ladder last month. On his two alts, Shohei Kimura ended up first and seventh on the ladder with one variant of the team, while Ryosuke Kosuge used a slightly different version of the team to finish second on the ladder. The version that I'll be showing in these replays are based on the pace that Mars VGC used to finish top 8 in the X9 League last weekend after an undefeated run in Swiss. The team revolves around Cantonian Zapdos. It's got one of the strongest max airstreams in the format, a passable speed tier, and very solid bulk. The ability to guarantee yourself 3 airstreams no matter what your opponent throws at you is incredibly valuable and electric and fire coverage moves are also very useful to clean up games. Zapdos is primarily paired with a Grimmsnarl, which has both Fake Out to stop setup and Fake Tears to ensure that Zapdos and Heatran can take their KOs. It can also trick away a Lagging Tail, which makes the holder go last in its priority bracket. I originally chalked this up to a ladder gimmick, but in testing it proved to be a legitimately solid form of speed control that doubled as disruption on Pokemon that needed their items. Zapdos is also paired with a Focus Sash Water Urshifu, in a lead that plays a lot like the Thunderous Urshifu core that was very popular earlier in the format. The team also has a second Dynamax target in Heatran, and a Choice Band Rillaboom that rounds out the Firewater Grass core. While Shohei had a Landorus in the last slot, this version of the team has a Porygon too. They both have different strengths and weaknesses, but they both serve to facilitate slower, more reactive game plans when you need to do so. So with that, let's get into the games. This game shows off the raw power of Zapdos, as well as the utility of Lagging Tail on Grimmsnarl. Our opponent leads Spectreer and Tapu Lele into our Zapdos and Grimmsnarl. Grimmsnarl isn't doing much in Psychic Terrain, so we switch Zapdos out into Rillaboom and trick the Lagging Tail onto the Spectreer. Moving first for the last time, it max strikes the Rillaboom before Moonblast finishes it off. We bring Zapdos back in, and now it's time to shine. We fake tears the Tapu Lele before nuking it with a max airstream, and then we get to comfortably take the Spectreer's max strike. Our opponent brings in Heatran, and this time we get to go for a Fake Tears and a Max Airstream to take the KO on Spectreer. Heatran uses a Flash Cannon on Grimmsnarl to do about 80%, and our opponent reveals their last Pokemon is an Urshifu. We switch Heatran in for Grimmsnarl, and Zapdos eats a Sucker Punch. We then give the Heatran a Speed Boost with Max Airstream, ensuring it outspeeds our opponent's Heatran. They KO the Zapdos with Heat Wave, but the writing is on the wall. We bring in Grimmsnarl, and they concede. This game showcases Heatran's utility as a Dynamax target and its synergy with Porygon 2. Our opponent is using a Sun Team with Regidrago on it, which is about as unpredictable as it gets. They lead Torkoal and Venusaur into our Grimmsnarl and Heatran, but immediately we pivot Heatran into Zapdos. The Venusaur Dynamaxes, but immediately is given a Lagging Tail to neuter Chlorophyll. It goes for a Max Ground into our Flying type, but Torkoal brings both our Pokemon down to red with Eruption. They protect the Torkoal from both our Fake Tears and Thunderbolts, allowing Venusaur to take two KOs, one with Vine Lash and the other with Residual Damage. We bring in our Heatran and our Porygon 2 and get the Special Attack Boost off download. They switch Torkoal out into their Porygon 2 and go for a Max Guard, but our Dynamax Heatran goes for a Max Ground into Porygon 2, giving our Porygon 2 a Special Defense Boost. Try Attack also chunks their Porygon 2 and the Dynamax ends. They go for an Ally Switch and we Max Flare what is now their Porygon 2, picking up a KO as Try Attack does about half to Venusaur. We then thankfully dodge the Sleep Powder and they bring in their last Pokemon, which is Reggie Eleki. Eleki protects and we max ground it and get a second special defense boost, making this Porygon 2 near unkillable. Ice Beam KOs their Venusaur and they concede. This game showcases one of the weaknesses of the team, the relatively low impact nature of its Trick Room mode. In contrast to ours, our opponent is running a team with a lot of Pokemon that could potentially Dynamax. We lead our Zapdos and Porygon 2 into Spectreer and Metagross. And we immediately switch out Zapdos for Rillaboom because we see what they're trying to do. They go for a Bulldoze to proc the Metagross's weakness policy, but thankfully they don't have Ice Punch, instead going for a Max Rock Wall into Rillaboom, which we just barely survive. Porygon 2 sets up Trick Room, hopefully setting up for a Heatran Sweep in the mid-game. Grassley Glide brings Spectreer down to a Focus Sash, and we pick up the KO with Ice Beam from Porygon 2. Metagross goes for a Steel Spike, doing about 80% of Porygon 2's health. Everyone gets some Grassy Terrain Recovery, and then they bring in their Cresselia. We go for a Grassy Glide into it, and we go for a Recover with Porygon 2, letting it live a little bit longer. Metagross Steel Spikes to KO the Rillaboom, and more importantly, 
giving the Cresselia a defense boost as it goes for a Calm Mind. This Cresselia is going to be near unkillable. Metagross' Dynamax ends, and we bring in our Heatran and Dynamax it, but Metagross goes for a Protect. We recover again, and Cresselia gets another Calm Mind off. We go for a Max Flare into Metagross, doing about 30% through Protect, and everyone gets some more Grassy Terrain Recovery, and then Porygon 2 does absolutely nothing to Cresselia with Try Attack. It takes about half from Iron Head, Cress sets up another Calm Mind, Heatran KOs the Metagross, and the game is functionally over. We didn't bring Urshifu, and they targeted down the Rillaboom early, leaving us with no other physical attackers and no way to KO a specially defense-boosted Cresselia. They style on us a little bit more with Wish Combine Sylveon, and eventually, we concede. Now let's move on to the best of three. We're playing against the Moltres Glastrier team that Donald Smith Jr. used in Players' Cup Finals. Glastrier exerts a lot of pressure on Zapdos, so we're pretty much forced into the Heatran mode for these games, although Zapdos is much stronger into Moltres. Game 1, he leads Glastrier in Incineroar, and we lead Zapdos in Urshifu, but we pivot Zapdos into Heatran on site. He maxes the horse and fakes out the Urshifu, and then goes for a Hailstorm into what is now a Heatran, setting up some hail. We Dynamax our Heatran, and he switches Incineroar out into Grimmsnarl as we Surging Strike the slot, doing about 60%. Now, we did see Life Orb last turn, so we can very safely Steel Spike the horse without fear of a weakness policy, and the defense boost and the Shaka Berry mean we take about 40% from his Max Quake in response. He goes for a Max Guard, as we close combat into the Max Guard and Steel Spike to KO the Grimstarl. His Dynamax finally ends, and in comes Porygon 2. He switches Glastrier out for the Incineroar, and it takes a Surging Strikes for its trouble. After 1, and 2, and 3 hits, the third hit finally knocks it out. We go for a max ground into Porygon 2 to get the special defense boost, and Porygon 2 sets up Trick Room. The Ice Horse comes back in, and High Horse Power and Try Attack from the Porygon 2 KO the Urshifu. In response, we KO the Glass Rear with a Flash Cannon. We bring in Rillaboom, and the Porygon 2 gets a Shadow Ball off, but the Choice Band boosted superpower is enough to clean up Game 1. To kick off Game 2, he leads Incineroar and Porygon 2 into Grimmsnarl and Heatran. Heatran protects while Incineroar fakes out the Grimmsnarl, and Porygon 2 gets up Trick Room safely. We max the Heatran and trick the Porygon 2 a Lagging Tail, removing its Evil Light. Try Attack and Flare Blitz KO the Grimmsnarl, but we get a critical hit on the max Steel Spike to one-shot the Porygon 2. Lucky us. He brings in the Ice Horse, and we bring in Urshifu. We max Guard to see Close Combat with Glastrier and Close Combat with Incineroar, both into our Protect. This allows Surging Strikes to KO the Incineroar. He brings in Moltres, and that was the one that I didn't want to see. We, we switch out Urshifu for the Rillaboom, and he protects the horse. We Steel Spike into it and do about a quarter as Moltres sets up Nasty Plot. Oh boy. Our Heatrain's Dynamax ends, and Moltres Dynamax begins as Grassy Glide chunks the horse. High Horse Power does a little under half to Heatran, and we KO it with a Heat Wave. Moltres goes for a Max Airstream, which KOs the Rillaboom and on the last turn of Trick Room. We bring in our Urshifu, and he goes for another Max Airstream, which brings us down to Focus Sash. Surging Strikes does about 30%, and Heat Wave tacks on another 20%, putting it just under half HP and proccing Berserk. We get some Grassy Terrain Recovery, and he really just wants to spread move, so he goes for a Max Guard. This eats up our Aqua Jet and our Heat Wave as his Dynamax ends. This time, it's our turn to double protect. If Heatran gets an attack off, I think we win, so we want all the Grassy Terrain recovery that we can get. Fury Wrath does nothing, and recovery procs for the last time. The moment of truth. We go for an Aqua Jet, Moltres goes for a Fury Wrath, Heatran survives, and it flitches. On to game three. Realizing our slight Grimmsnarl dependence, our opponent leads both Dark Types into the Grimmsnarl and Urshifu. We try to catch a Nasty Plot, and we hard switch to Zapdos, but he maxes the Moltres right away, and goes for a Max Airstream and Spirit Break into the Zapdos, making it pretty much useless. Furthermore, we proc the Moltres' weakness policy with our own Spirit Break, so this turn went about as poorly as physically possible. Zapdos goes for a Protect, and Grimstarl immediately dies to another Max Airstream and a Spirit Break, so things are really not looking too good. We bring Heatran in and Dynamax it as it takes roughly 40% from a Max Darkness. Thunderbolt brings the Moltres down to about half HP before Spirit Break takes out the Zapdos, while also getting a Static Paralysis, so maybe we have an out. Steel Spike brings the Moltres into the red as Dynamax ends. We bring in our Urshifu, and Aqua Jet picks up the KO on Moltres as Grimstraw sets up a Light Screen. This lets it live a Max Steel Spike with a sliver of health, and in comes Porygon 2. 
He switches Grim Snarl out for Incineroar, which eats the Aqua Jet, and Max Quake goes into the Porygon 2, which then sets up Trick Room. We go for Protect on both of our Pokemon, starting the process of stalling out Trick Room, as he doubles up on the Urshifu with Tri Attack and Close Combat. He doubles it again, but we live thanks to both of the defense boosts it has, and we need to decay the Porygon 2 right now, so we Flash Cannon it and Close Combating it, bringing it down to about 20%. Urshifu protects, Porygon 2 gets to recover off, and Incineroar attacks into the Protect, but we get a KO on the Incineroar with an Earth Power critical hit, so now we just need to double Protect to win the game. We go for it, we do not get it, Spirit Break picks up the KO, and barring a Flash Cannon special defense drop, Heatran is never beating a Porygon 2 1v1, especially when it has Light Screen up. We don't get it, and we lose the set. So, what can we take away from this? Zapdos is undoubtedly a fantastic Dynamax target. It has good bulk, great coverage, and one of the most powerful max airstreams in the format. With fake tears to support, it can tear through teams. This makes Grimmsnarl a natural partner. Lacking Tail is a legitimately good form of speed control, and Zapdos usually only needs one Pokemon incapacitated to run through a team. Furthermore, Trick makes the two biggest Trick Room setters in this format a lot less bulky, often enough for Zapdos to power through them. This team, however, is very reliant on that partnership. If your opponent has something you can't power through with Zapdos, you often have to play a much more reactive game or base your entire game plan around Heatran, neither of which are nearly as strong. Heatran is a very strong Dynamax Pokemon in its own right, with its ability to boost both defenses and pressure the ice types that Zapdos wants to avoid. It also benefits greatly from fake tiers, as well as the airstream boost from Zapdos if it chooses not to Dynamax. Urshifu and Rillaboom are two of the best cleanup Pokemon in the game. Urshifu benefits from the speed boost from Zapdos, while Rillaboom partners well with Heatran defensively. The team certainly doesn't lack damage, and all these Pokemon, as well as Porygon 2, have enough bulk and defensive synergy to play very reactively when you need to. However, the team does have some weaknesses. The downside to Lagging Tail is that you always have the slowest Fake Out. If your opponent wants to set up something like Trick Room, Fake Out will always allow them to do so. While you do have a Heatran to respond to Glass Rear in Trick Room, other Trick Room abusers can be very problematic. Similarly, you don't have great responses to sleep, so a Moongus in Trick Room can easily shut down your entire team if you can't give it a lagging tail. Finally, the team feels incomplete. People have used both Porygon 2 and Landorus in the last slot, and while they both patch some matchups, they both also have downsides. Landorus compounds your ice weakness and has anti-synergy with Rillaboom, while Porygon 2 is best used while getting boost from Heatran, but it shares a fighting weakness with it, so it's not always great to have them on the field at the same time. There's got to be something better that goes in that last slot, and the person who figures it out is going to win a lot of money one weekend. Maybe it'll be me. Who knows?